Hello. I'd like to talk to you about consumer and producer surplus. First question, why do we care? Well, the reason we care is, one, it's often tested in economics courses, but also more importantly, is that consumer and producer surplus are measures of well-being. Obviously, consumer surplus, a measure of the benefit that consumers receive, because, you know, if I am willing to pay more than what I have to pay, I, I'm kind of happy. And producers, when they um, receive more than what they need for the product, that kind of makes them happy too. Now, producer surplus is because of fixed costs is not exactly the same thing as profits, but it is a measure of, of the well-being that goes to the producer and is often used in, in various subjects. So let's talk about how to calculate it. So I created this table down here. So over here we have the quantity, then I have a demand curve, marginal cost, well, I could have just said supply, but the way we're doing our supply curve is normally supply curve is marginal cost. And so also with this definition where it says producer sur surplus is the price of the product minus the marginal cost. And the marginal cost, as I just mentioned, is kind of the supply curve. And so let's calculate it. And I'm going to use, I like green. So equilibrium, in fact, let's draw our line here first of all. Our, um, I'm going to represent this by, I'm just going to do a downward sloping demand curve. We could actually just have horizontal line at 500 for the first unit, um, 400 for the second unit, 300 for the sec third, but I'm just going to represent it with this straight line just for simplicity. And then over here, um, I'm going to represent it by this line over here. And then let's label this. Uh, let's just... Oops, there goes my speaker. Hopefully it comes back soon. And so let me get my pen out here. So we're going to call this... Okay, where's my pen? Back pen. That's going to be my supply curve. This is my demand curve. Equilibrium price is going to be right here. Price, equilibrium price, where the two curves are the same. Looks like th there's no shortage or surplus. Looks like three units. Oops. Three units and $300. It looks like 300. Hopefully it looks like 300. And so what we're saying is this triangle up here, this is the consumer surplus. Uh, I'm trying to put all these things in here. Okay, I'll use this other way of doing it. Here we go. So there's consumer surplus. And down here would be producer surplus, where this supply curve is equal to our marginal cost. So PS for producer surplus, CS for consumer surplus. Um, let's assume for simplicity that that's 500 units up here, and then uh, 100 units over here. And so here I have 500 minus the price is 300, 500 minus 300. I think that's 200, isn't it? Tough math problems here. 400 minus the price of 300. So this person receives an ex extra surplus of 100. Now this third unit, person values it at 300, has to pay 300. 300 minus 300 is equal to zero. Fourth unit, person has to pay 300. Is willing to pay 200? I don't think so. Sorry, no deal. And this person's willing to pay 100, has to pay 300, no deal. Okay, sellers. They get 300, has to get 100, 300 minus 100, looks like surplus of 200. And I didn't mean to make these perfectly equal. I just wanted something easy to subtract. And price was 300. See our equilibrium price, 300. Minus, what's our marginal cost is 200, 300 minus 200. Sounds very close to 100. 
and then 300 minus 300 is zero. And this firm needs $400, that costs them $400 to produce it. We offer them 300 and they say, no deal. And likewise, I'm not gonna sell it to you for five, I need 500, I'm not gonna sell it to you for 300. No deal. So two plus one, 200 plus 100 plus zero is $300. 200 plus 100 plus zero, $300. Total surplus is those two added together. I'm gonna to just call it TS for total surplus is equal to 300 plus 300 is 600. Now normally it's not gonna be a nice even case where it's the same number for consumer and producer surplus, but it could be as my example shows here. Another way of calculating, in this example, another way of calculating it is, that well, looks like a triangle. And so assuming it's a nice straight line, we have one half base times height, base is what, zero to three, which is three, height 500 minus 300 times which is what five minus three i think that's pretty close to 200 or rather yeah, actually 200 and uh which is what uh, 300 dollars one half times three t times 200 is 300 if i did the same thing for the and so that's our consumer surplus and then our one half, and this again we're, is because we have a straight line, three times two is equal to $300. $300, which is equal to our producer surplus. Add uh, producer surplus plus consumer surplus is total surplus. Now we still need to talk about deadweight loss, but this gives you kind of an idea of what we're doing with consumer and producer surplus. And it's kind of interesting to look at the history of this. If you look at Alfred Marshall and his original viewpoint, he had the same definition of consumer surplus, slightly different definition for producer surplus, where he um, um, didn't feel like produce, producer surplus was just the marginal cost taken out. But I'm going to leave that to your reading because I think, of course, you're fascinated by economic history. But in our case right here, take the the uh, value the person put it put on it. In fact, we could call this marginal value, MV, or marginal benefit. They're willing to pay up to 500. They only have to pay 300. So try, find how much this person's value is greater than what they have to pay. Sum all those up. You have their consumer surplus. Take the... Uh, price minus the additional cost of producing each unit, you have the producer surplus, add those two together, you have total surplus. Or if you have the straight line and doing it geometrically, look for the triangle, assuming we can assume just uh, straight lines. So you have triangles. Hey, I like triangles. Talk to you later.